coffee is ready, and it's very important that you're quick on this. You need a Ziploc bag, a small bag, and in this case, I'm going to open and I'm going to get the coffee grounds, which right now they are a little bit dripping and are very, very hot. Why I want this? Because this is not even a pasteurization, but it's, it kills, since it's steam and it's hot, it kills some organisms that were there in the coffee. So this is not a very sterile, well, this is not a sterile process, but it's something that can be done. So when you remove all the coffee from the espresso machine, Then you close it, and now you have your coffee. So here I want to show you exactly how you put the mushrooms into this bag. Normally people would call this uh, to clone the mushrooms. It is a term that I don't like to use too much because you're not cloning anything in here. You're just transferring the mushrooms from one place to another. And I have a package here of baby bells. So I'm going to open the baby bags and I really want to go over how exactly is that you have to cut the baby bags everywhere. How exactly you want to cut. So first of all, this mushroom have to be very clean. Normally they're not clean. They're, um, you know, dirty. So in terms of the portobellos or uh, uh, other type of mushroom like the white button, which is the same mushroom as the portobello. It's just a different type. Um, you need to sort of um, clean it. You don't wash them. You just clean them with a uh, just a wet uh, paper towel. Um, but the cut that you want to make, you don't want to use the outside portion because it's the part that I'm touching. So we're introducing more microorganisms in here. It's not that this is sterile, but we want to minimize the contamination in there. I'm going to show you one bag that was completely contaminated. I want to explain why. But this is it. So here's how we actually um, cut this in order to inoculate or to transfer this mycelia into here. One thing that you need to remember, this is just the reproductive phase of the mushroom. The actual mushroom is what you see here. All these white cotton-like structures. This is the organism. It's a bunch, imagine there's a bunch of like a net of look like cotton that is called the mycelium, all together looking to absorb nutrients. And when they reproduce, they produce what we call the mushroom. So it's not that we're gonna clone this and make what of exactly this in there, we're pretty much growing. This is an alive organism. That's why we're gonna transfer this to a media. And since we're transferring to a media, it would grow, and it would grow just like this. All right, so what we do is we take the baby bella, and then we cut it. We're gonna cut two small pieces from inside of this, you'll see how, and then we gotta put it in there, and that's it, it's simple enough. So you just cut it this way. Now this is sterile or without that many contaminants, right? And you just do another cut like this, okay? So you wanna remove all the outer portion, those are the one that were exposed. Then you open the back and then you introduce and close it real quick. Okay, then this is exposed already. So it's, it's a, a good practice would be to clean this very well. So you cut the outer portion again. Tell you this, this is not a sterile process, 
That's why I'm not using on nothing else other than clean stuff. And then it would look like this. So my hope is the mycelia to grow in here in the coffee ground and produce pretty much uh, mycelia. And when it, this is all covered in white, just like in this case, this is ready to transfer to different other phases of um, you know, how to grow mushrooms. So here I want to show you exactly what are these. I have mentioned it before. This has been inoculated. I have another date in here. Uh, oh, the April the 2nd with a uh, king oyster. You can see there's mycelia growing in the actual walls of the secret bag. So this is ready to transfer. I did this to create a mushroom bed outside. So it's going to be an outdoor mushroom bed. Now, this is another one. This is being inoculated the 31st of March. And this is, I, I can, it's going to be difficult to see on, on this camera, but I see primordials, which are like pretty much like small dots that um, in perfect condition, it would turn into the actual basidio carp, in this case for the uh, king oyster. But this is ready to go. So from here, I can transfer this to grain or to hay or to the source that I want to uh, grow that king oyster. And here I have one smaller king oyster also. This is king oyster that I inoculated it's the April the 7th. Um, it's not doing pretty well. So if you see something like this, if you don't see in one week the uh, white cotton growing on the coffee ground, then it's contaminated. You have to try it over. That's why I normally what I would do is to do it a couple of uh, you know um, over you know a couple of days when I buy new or fresh milk. Another, another thing that I want to show you is a lot of people have tried this and um, I actually have a student that, um, that was growing this and said, oh, this is not working, this is not, um, I'm just going to throw it outside, leave it there. What happened after the winter, boom, they flourished, they grew. Um, again, this is, not, uh, this is not a plant, this is not a plant like a a bean plant that you put a bean and then you, it grows pretty quick in 14 days and you harvest. No, you need perfect condition to grow all this. And no, you need to know each step. If you know each step, colonization of the substrate, transferring, and then colonization of the second substrate, wait until it's actually completely colonized, Triggers. There's a bunch of things that triggers the, the production of those basidio plants. Just remember, they're reproducing, and when when they reproduce, is because they want to produce a lot of spores. So there's some triggers that uh, that pretty much triggers the growth of the basidio plants after they produce the basidio. So I hope you like it. I hope you enjoy it. I hope you actually do it. And if you do it, just uh, let me know. Uh, just send me an email, michaelgeo uh, at gmail. And you can check all this, uh, you know, different pictures at hashtag michaelgeo on Instagram. Stay tuned. See